January 2012 Planning Commission meeting, part one. Thank you for coming on the special night. Uh, two main items on the agenda, so we're going to jump right in. Number one, SD 2011, SD 04 final for Rite Aid of Pennsylvania, Inc. to consolidate two lots and construct a pharmacy with a drive through at 237 East Lancaster Avenue. Is the applicant present? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm going to flip it back to David or Peter to give us a quick update. We've seen this several times. So why don't we start to our left, and then we'll come back to the applicant. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you said, this is a uh, final plan. The preliminary plan was granted uh, several months ago. Uh, I've issued a review letter dated January 3rd. Most of the previous comments have been addressed. Uh, there's only some minor cleanup items, and there are several general comments uh, which I brought up. And I, I think I'll defer to speaking to them until after the applicant makes their presentation, because I'm sure they want to uh, discuss several of the items. So. So before we turn the applicant, give us give us a um, um, a review of the timing on the final plan. Well, the plan was uh, just submitted. So uh, as far as the timing is, the 90-day MPC clock. You mean uh, yes. we ha we have until uh, April 4th uh, to bring this before the commissioners. Thank you. With that, we'll turn to the applicant for a uh, overview. Yes. Of the plan, the changes from the last one we saw, and okay. and the comments to David's comments. All right. Um, my name is Don Petros. I'm an attorney representing Rite Aid, the applicant in this application. And as uh, Dave indicated, we're here seeking your recommendation of approval for final land development plans dated March 9th, 2011, last revised uh, uh, December 14th, 2011, for the proposed Rite Aid at 237 East Lancaster Avenue. Uh, on October 24, 2011, we received preliminary plan approval from the Board of Commissioners. We submitted the final plans on uh, December 15, 2011, which addressed the September 9, 2011 review comments of the Township Engineer. Uh, as uh, the Township Engineer has indicated, we've received a final plan review letter from the Township Engineer dated uh, January 3, 2012. And there are only uh, two minor uh, specific comments in there, and, and I, I will address those specific comments. Um, the, th then there are some general comments, that, as he mentioned, that were added on at the end that we'd like to address, too. Uh, the, the changes to the plans are very, very minor. They were in order to address the outstanding review comments of September 9th. If you'd like, I could have the engineer point out the, the, the major uh, major minor changes in the plan, and then I'll address the uh, comments. Please do. Thank you. This is uh, Rhett Chilberti from Bowler Engineering. Yeah. The majority of the comments were uh, administrative in nature, notes added to the plan, uh, some clarification. So I'll just hit some of the high points. Uh, there was a comment with regard to the lighting design and the levels on site. Um, and uh, it was the question was there was a high level noted uh, in the rear, and the the, um, the reality was was that um, the lighting design incorporated the f uh, fence along the property line, and that was just something that we needed to bring to the attention of the township engineer, and and that resolved that comment. Uh, the other lighting uh, comment was to provide. Details for the proposed street lights along Lancaster Avenue and Aberdeen Avenue. We provided the, the, the township standard details on the plans. Um, there was an environmental note that needed to be added to the plans with regard to the clean, cleanup uh, for the site. Currently, the site is undergoing cleanup by the owner of the property, so that's an ongoing process, and the note was added to the plan. We just wanted to bring that to your attention that we added the note. Um, the radius on Cromer Road was a smaller radius previously, and now we have enlarged that to thir a 30-foot radius uh, to improve the turning movement from Lancaster on the Cromer. And lastly, uh, the sanitary, there's an existing sanitary main that runs through our property and also the property to the north. 
Uh, and there was some question as to whether or not the exact locations of the, top of the existing sewer laterals tying into that main. So we had worked with the township engineer and uh, Steve Norsini to identify where those laterals are. So we have added them to the plan and um, so we now know where those existing laterals are located. So those were the highlights and the rest were basically uh, administrative. Just uh, it, in the, uh, the style of the review letter is that uh, old comments are repeated, even the ones that are resolved, and the only ones that need discussion or uh, potential revision are the ones that are in bold. And the, uh, the first bold comment appears on page three of the plan, and it, this has to do with the time of delivery of the vehicles. There was a request that uh, to avoid potential conflicts with the township's uh, vehicles, trucks that are going in and out of the public works facility. They basically uh, work from, uh, I think, 7 a.m. to 3, or 4, 3 p.m. in the afternoon is their uh, busiest time. Uh, and they're pretty much closed after that. That we would, if we would have our deliveries uh, of tractor trailers after that. And we have arranged to have the uh, tractor trailer deliveries uh, after that. And we had a note on the plan that tractor trailer deliveries would be, I think, between 10 p.m. and 7 uh, a.m., which is uh, when the public works starts to uh, heat up. And the request was that we, we note on the plan that uh, that's the only time deliveries are uh, permitted of the tractor trailers and also that we uh, indicate, uh, put some signage that uh, indicate that those deliveries are to be made, you know, uh, after hours, essentially. So that, that really was the, uh, the one comment. And the other comment relates... Can I ask a question related to that? Sure. We're 10 p.m. to 7 a.m.? There's a residence right next door. Uh, there, there, is, there is one residence right next door. The, um, and that was the second part of the, part of that. There's a comment in there that I'm glad you mentioned. That I forgot to mention, the, you know, the the beepers when the uh, when a truck backs up. Uh, in this review letter, wasn't really the beepers are OSHA required. Right, right. It, it wasn't really the issue. wasn't really raised before, and the times were okay. We were supposed to meet with Public Works to see if the times of delivery were satisfactory, and they were. Uh, and it, in, in the review letter, there's a comment that how are you going to deal with the the backup, you know, beeper. Um, uh, at that time, and we really don't have a, an effective way of dealing with that. I think that's an OSHA requirement that the vehicles have it. We can't even uh, disable it. So, um, but we're only we're only talking about um, the you know the big tractor trailer deliveries. The, there's smaller deliveries like the potato chip truck and that sort of thing. They can fit right into a, a parking space, and frankly, probably will to you know to. Uh, Unload things, but we're talking about the uh, just the tractor trailer deliveries, and there was a concern that they be after hours so as to not uh, have a conflict with the uh, with the township public works facilities. I don't think the township has any regulation on when you can make deliveries and when you can't make deliveries. Uh, any ordinance regulation, to the best of my knowledge, we're just trying to cooperate. We were told to meet with public works. We did. They said those times would work well, and that's what, that's why we put put that on the plan. We can, we can, Do we have uh, any idea how often they get tractor trailer deliveries? Yeah, it's week a, or day or one time a week, once a week. Um, it would seem to me that if you allow them to make them as early as seven o'clock, and then it would be better. I yeah, would, yeah, I, so, I would, I would think. Yeah, okay. just move the move the time up from seven p.m. to uh, seven, <laughs> seven a.m. Some, you know, sometime in that in that time, and try to get them to come on the earlier side. Yeah, we, we're trying to avoid conflict with the public works and rush hour, you know, frankly. So any time after rush hour uh, works. But we'll, we'll correct the note on the plan. Okay, so, so the, the note on our, our notes says, talks about 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. Th and you're, you're saying 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. So which, which it, note should we expect for the plan? The, the, were you seeing the uh, 2 a.m.? That is from an earlier review letter. They just repeated the comment. But in our submittal letter and on the plan, it's on uh, note 24, no, note 28 on sheet 9. It indicates that it will be, um, deliveries would be between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. And we can change that to maybe 7 p.m. to, uh, to uh, 7 a.m. So uh, we're just trying to. Right. 
Yeah, but uh, Paul Newland, who's the director of real estate, is just saying, you know, if, if the delivery becomes a problem, we can work with the township, you know, to resolve the times. We're not, we just, we, the public works, their main concern was that we not conflict, you know, with, their, with what they're doing here. And that's with the tractor trailer. That's what we're trying to do. Was there any discussion, um, those other trucks, because you, you keep specifically mentioning the tractor trailers, the other delivery trucks, which I can picture the size trucks you're discussing, uh, the, the turning radius of the driveway at on Lancaster and on Aberdeen, that those radi they're, they're 90 degree, and I know that initially we actually had you make right. those driveway entrances right. um, smaller Correct. for pedestrian uh, safety, which is great, but they are, there's no radius to either of them. And I'd be curious right. how those, those are big trucks coming in off of Lancaster Avenue, even those potato chip sized right. trucks. Right. Um, was there any comment or concern about perhaps making a radius to the, a small one to, to allow for those trucks to come in and out? That's an excellent question. And actually, I'm going to let Red address it, but we are considering that because PennDOT sort of raised the, the same issue that maybe we ought to have a little radius on there. And for, for, at, we looked at Aberdeen. We can actually get a larger truck, a truck larger than, than the bread truck or the chip truck into Aberdeen um, because we're, we're we're turning, um, you know, along You're going the, north on along Aberdeen. the east, right. you know, along the east side and traveling north. Uh, but we um, we do have some comments from Pennant. Pennant's actually going to require us to add some radii along this access point, which will allow us to get in. Yeah, there, I didn't so. see a truck pulling in so. without it. So, okay, thank you. Now, when the tractor trailers come in, what are they going to go up Aberdeen, go go along the side of the building, and then curl around? Right. Or are they going to come in back in off of Lancaster Avenue? They're going to come in off of Lancaster Avenue and turn in and then back into the, into the space. All right. We, and we've worked, we've we worked, worked with that Steve. We worked with uh, Steve Marcini, and he was satisfied with it. The only other uh, specific comment is under, it's on page four under Roman numeral three, one, which uh, said an easement should be provided around the proposed stormwater management facilities, BMPs, that will permit ingress and egress from a public right of way. And they, after that, in the next page, it says the applicant has indicated that an easement will be provided. A note to this effect must be provided on the um, post-construction stormwater management plan. And it, what, what will actually happen is there's going to be a post, uh, there's going to be a stormwater management maintenance and operation agreement that, that, that we're required to sign. That's one of our conditions of uh, every approval in the township, and it's a condition of our preliminary plan approval. And that specifically provides that we're responsible for maintaining the stormwater management facilities on our property, but that the township has the right to come onto the property to it, it for periodic inspections of those facilities, and that if we do not maintain them, the township has the right to come onto the property to access them. So I, I personally don't think that a, 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 that that's going to give a general sort of blanket easement. And uh, Steve Norsini indicated that he was satisfied with that, too, because it, it, the, under the standard agreement, they clearly have the right to come onto the property for stormwater management facilities. So th those were the only two. Uh, specific uh, uh, comments. The rest are under general comments, and most of these we don't really have much of a problem with. Uh, number one is just that there's a request that we put the, the dates on which the waivers and zoning relief were obtained, add that to sheet two, and we can certainly do that as an administrative matter. The, number two was uh, parking easements for the spaces reserved for the Public Works Department must be submitted to the township solicitor for review and approval. And we, we actually did. We, we submitted that on um, October 17th. And uh, we're, we're still waiting for some comments. And, and we still owe the, uh, the township uh, some uh, legal descriptions that, that match the, you know, the uh, narrative in the, in the document. But we are doing that. And that's uh, well on its way to being completed. Uh, number three was the applicant must provide a design of the proposed welcome to the Wayne Business District gateway sign for review by the Planning Commission. It, this was a request that it came way back when we started this project that uh, uh, Dan Malloy and um, Matt Bauman uh, thought that it would be nice if you know there was a sign there. Um, probably not going to say welcome to the Wayne Business Overlay District, but something like welcome to the Wayne Business District or something to that effect. And they asked us if we would do it, and we said, sure, just tell us you know, what kind of sign you want and the details of it. Well, 
nobody ever gave us that feedback, so they said, why don't you guys design something and then show it to us and we'll tell you if we like it. And, and that's what we're going to do. We're in the process of doing that. Uh, the only comment I would have, and it's entirely up to you, but it might be appropriate to have that go to the design review board. They're reviewing our other signage, and they, they have a lot of expertise in the area of signs. So uh, my thought would be that we'd have that reviewed by the design review board and get their input on it. Um, number four, the applicant must modify the existing 20-foot wide private right-of-way which leads to the public works facility such that it follows the existing driveway rather than diagonally across a little corner of our property. And I think, Rhett, you're working to, to do that? Yeah, we're working on that right now. The, the way the deeds are written, the uh, Cromer Road right-of-way comes in at an angle. So um, we just... We're going to work with the township engineer to adjust that to, to, so that it extends straight north towards uh, the public works building. Where, where their existing driveway is. Uh, number five was uh, access and construction easements for the sanitary sewer main must be submitted to the township solicitor for review and approval. And uh, we can do that. They're shown on the plan, the easement shown on the plan. But I actually think it's a good idea to have a narrative legal description that talks about maintenance responsibilities and those things. So we'll submit that to the township solicitor. Uh, number six, uh, sidewalk must be provided for the full length of the area between the five proposed parking spaces allocated for the public works department and the public works parking lot. Uh, this was a request that came out of our meeting with uh, Steve Morsini and Dave Lay. Um, because some of the, the public works employees park on our side of uh, kind of a uh, divider between the, the, the property. They wanted to know if we could put it there. They've been parking there for years, but if we put a little walkway in there and we said that we would do that, so Rhett's going to put that on the plan, the walkway that was requested. Uh, number seven, the applicant must provide verification that proposed lighting is dark sky compliant, and I'm not quite sure what that means. Did you, have you figured that out? <laughs> okay. It just has to deal with the shape of the lens, so we, we can comply with that. And then the, the, the last one, which is one that we, we do have uh, uh, a problem with, uh, is that the, and this is the first time that the, the request has appeared in any of the reviews, the township request the applicant consider extending the beautification improvements proposed along their frontage west to 219 East Lancaster Avenue, Bank of America, as well as along the south side of Lancaster Avenue for the same distance. Um, and uh, we just cannot do that. I mean, when they're talking about the beautification, they're talking about replacing all the sidewalk on the other side of the street and all the way up uh, past the coin shop and the pizza place and cozies uh, up to uh, Bank of America. And there, there are just a, a litany of problems with that. I mean, there, there are legal problems, uh, uh, first of all, but there are practical problems as well. It, it, generally, there are limitations as to what conditions can be placed on an approval, and they relate to improvements on your site. We've been asked to do some off-site improvements, and we thought they were reasonable, the other off-site improvements, and we've agreed to do them. We're fixing an existing sanitary sewer line. It has some issues. We're uh, putting new signal heads on the light at the intersection of Lancaster Avenue and Aberdeen, replacing some signs that we've been requested to replace. We're doing the Wayne business sign. Uh, those sorts of things we felt were within the realm of reasonableness. Uh, th this one would be, number one, a, a huge expense, uh, a hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, a, um, a, an administrative nightmare and it would be a tremendous disruption, in my opinion, to the existing businesses that are trying to operate a business. It's one thing for us to completely replace all of our sidewalk with the, the inlaid brick and all of that, because our, our business is going to be closed while we're doing that. But these other businesses are open and operating. And the, the, our sidewalk is somewhere in the eight and a half to nine feet uh, width. If you try to put that width of a sidewalk in front of these other properties where we don't have the right to go, some of them would lose their entire parking. The, the, there's a little strip center next to us where the coin shop and the pizza shop is. They have four parking spaces that, that go up a ramp. You'd extend into their parking spaces, plus the sidewalk has to be perfectly flat. You'd wind up having to build a retaining wall on their property. 
On the other side of the street where you have Joe's and, and the, you, you know what's there, all the other businesses, small businesses that are there, most of that doesn't even have any curb. It's, it's just one big open curb cut. PennDOT, this would all have to be approved by PennDOT. There's about $100,000 worth of survey and design work before you even get to, uh, to PennDOT with it. PennDOT would require that curb be installed all along there. You'd have a six inch reveal, which you're going to have all kinds of grading problems. They probably would insist on the access to some of these businesses being channelized instead of being wide open the way that it is. And it would just be a complete nightmare. In, in my view, the only way that's going to get done is if, just like this property is being redeveloped. If somebody's redeveloping the property and changing the buildings around and moving things around, uh, it can be done. Uh, beyond that, it's just, it's just not practical. Um, plus, it's not part of our preliminary plan approval, and we're entitled to a final approval of a plan that's consistent with our preliminary plan. So. I had a quick question. Sure. It says, and perhaps you guys know over there, the township requests this. Who requested this? Well, it was it was brought up at our. I'm sorry, it was brought up at our, our SAC meeting. I, it came came from the township administration, so we, we said we'd put it in the letter and have the applicant respond to it. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Could I? That's I think complete. That's, Thank you. I, I think that's it. While you're there, let's go back to David for your comments. Uh, I, I think Don hit hit my uh, key comments. I the the items in bold are are really the only plan modifications which need to be made, uh, and you know it sounds like they're willing to comply with most everything. Um, and you know, I, I don't see any issues. I guess, um, I guess we. D the only thing I, I guess we just need to uh, clarify is what direction, how we handle this, uh, the gateway sign. Whether it's something you want to see come back to the planning commission, or whether it should go to the design review board. But uh, other than that, as long as they're willing to comply with the other comments, uh, I have no problem. And the other comments, David, were you know number two, number four, five, were working. Any reason why you would think they'd have to come back here first? I don't. I don't look at any of those as being major items. Do you see any of those as being major items that we should see first before this was to go back to the commissioners? I do not. I, I mean, I, yeah, I do not. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Why we have them here? I I have one. Go right ahead. Uh, for now, the list of requested waivers. We've yes. not seen uh, request number five before. And that's a pretty major one that I brought up a few months ago about the through lot being prohibited. Yeah, that, that was granted at the, uh, uh, by the commissioners as part of the resolution of preliminary plan approval. I had some discussion with the uh, township solicitor about that. I, I personally did not think it was applicable to our situation, uh, nor did, did he, but we thought that the prudent thing to do would be to include that request for a waiver, and it was granted as part of the preliminary plan uh, approval. By the Board yeah, of Commissioners. By the, by the Board of Commissioners. Because we didn't see that. I think, you're, I think it was raised at, right. at, at the Planning Commission meeting, and we had discussion about it, but there wasn't really much to, to see. Uh, you know, I mean, we didn't have, we didn't present documentation. The only thing we did was we submitted a letter that detailed uh, justification for all the waivers in great detail. I think that was discussed as having a, a letter, and we, we uh, addressed that in the letter. Um, then the other thing, if we could go back at the very beginning of your presentation, you, you made mention of cleanup, and I didn't quite catch what you were saying about cleanup by the property owner. Maybe, maybe you, maybe the engineer commented on it. I'm just thinking about that with regard to waiver number four about uh, not recharging the groundwater. The uh, the waiver for number for the recharge. The reason why we were asking for the waiver is because there, there's certain sites that, based on the level of contamination in the soil, there's certain sites that will not uh, allow you to infiltrate your water through the soil because what happens is the water passing through the soil gets contaminated and then it further contaminates the groundwater. 
So that I, was the, I understand that, was, that. I was you mentioned that the property owner is undergoing cleanup and I just was trying to clarify what the cleanup is that he's uh, doing. Yeah, right now, we already have the waivers, but she's just asking a question about right the now cleanups. he's he's going through a um, he's going through DEP through what they call the Act Two cleanup program. And um, they are what they're basically doing is um, monitoring the groundwater that's out there right now and remediating that through you know monitoring wells um, so and that's just something that that's ongoing with DEP so is it the owner's intention to clean up the ground such that we could recharge the groundwater no. or not the, the intent the intent is to make it safe for human contact so um, if you were going to you know if you're going to walk on the site you, you're not go, you know People won't be uh, impacted by the by the contaminated soil and groundwater. But didn't you just say these are monitoring wells? Yes. And what happens if they exceed limits? What what's the burden on the present or future landowner? Um, that's a little bit out of my level of expertise, but but based on based on what I know. What will happen is the, the DEP will issue uh, essentially an Act Two clearance letter, and uh, they will require, as part of that, periodic reporting to uh, DEP. Um, no, I'm sorry. I said that uh, eventually DEP will issue uh, an Act Two clearance letter, and then they there will be uh, some required periodic monitoring of the site. And that, that's about it. Sometimes there's an environmental covenant that they require if there's going to be a transfer of the property uh, that gets uh, re um, recorded and referenced in, the, in a deed for a transfer of the property. But I, I just went through another one of these on another property that a, a client of mine just bought. But uh, that's pretty much it. What's the point of the wells then? Yeah, I mean, within reason. Well. You know, I, I think what they what they do with the monitoring wells. I mean, I, I don't know the details of, of this particular site environmentally, but they um, they they check the levels to 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 see what they are. And um, uh, again, drawing on another example, I had uh, when the Act Two is complete. You're actually, part of the re final remediation is to remove the wells. Uh, I had a client who wanted to keep one of the wells in because another business across the street, a gas station, was still undergoing remediation and had a tendency to migrate. And we just wanted to monitor to see if any of their stuff was coming over onto our property. So it's not that he's doing remediation and cleaning it up. He's putting in wells to monitor just how contaminated the land is. I mean, that's what I'm trying to get clarity on. He's cleaning it up or he's not. He's remediating or he's not. Are you putting in wells? Are you putting in monitoring wells? They're out there today. Yeah, the wells, okay. the wells are there. The wells are there. Right. It would, based on what you're saying here, is what, we're at, what you're asking for, or what, what the waiver that you're requesting is that you not. No, we're not requesting any waivers. We already have all of our waivers. Okay, we're not requesting any new waivers. That, that's that's done. We, Fine. We went. We discussed this with the township board. Right? Yeah. Okay, but the the waiver means that you do not have to, or not only that, you do not, right. you now have a right to not percolate that through the right. ground right. for the contamination you, reason. What happens, you know, and I'm not an environmental expert either, but you don't get every ounce of contamination out of the property. There's a, a, an acceptable level that remains on the property. Mm -hmm. a, a, and that's what we're talking about. So it's still not recommended to infiltrate rainwater into it because there is st some level of these elements mm -hmm. uh, that's still there. But it's been, it's been reduced to an acceptable level uh, as far as DEP is concerned. Now, do you, do you put some kind of like a clay cap or something on there to prevent the water from you're shaking your head. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an, it would be the as, asphalt pavement cap, um, or um, if you have grass, it's usually two foot minimum clean soil as a cap. Not like something that would you know, prevent the penetration Somet of water. Sometimes it's clay, just, it depends on the level of contamination. But you're correct, there's, there are cap requirements, and there will be a cap on the site. Any other questions for the applicant? I'll take public comment if there's any. Peter, real quick. Once waivers were granted in preliminary approval, 
Yes. We can't ungrant them for final? No. Okay. Hi, Happy New Year, everybody. Merry Christmas. Jim Schneller, I live at, at uh, the Brinfield, which is uh, a block away by Wayne Standards. I consider Wayne Standard important. And living on, the, living on the next block, which is the first block of residential type neighborhood, I just have a lot of misgivings I wanted to air. I've said some of them before, but I'm concerned that Aberdeen is going to be, I don't see any concern whatsoever about Aberdeen Avenue north of the Pike being looked at with the future in mind. And I think, I haven't seen shade trees, so I'm kind of talking through out of, uh, from looking at this diagram. I just don't think that Aberdeen should ma be maintained as a narrow sidewalk street. That is the eastern limit of the district, business district. Uh, sooner or later, it's just it's going to be just that. And we need room for some larger shade trees and a, uh, a boulevard type feel. A lot of people are putting money into this and to the malls right on the other side of Aberdeen. Let's not make the sidewalk the last or the or the waif that never gets attention. And I'd still, I know I'm, I've insisted on this before, but I think this is a chance to close that driveway on Aberdeen Ave. Uh, somebody was just observantly mentioning the, uh, the convenience that was done, the convenience of those wide open curbless swaths on Lancaster Pike by the uh, east west of St. Catharines. And that's a very good point. And, uh, and the Sunoco, or whatever they are, enjoy that. But with that freedom, you don't want to have any kind of traffic on this side of the street. I don't know if Taco Bell has been a good test, but you've got gridlock facing you from 3 p.m. till 7 p.m. You're going to have problems with people going left and right off of Lancaster Pike and waiting for these turns. I know there was a traffic study promised. Was there one put forth? No, there was, it, what happened was there was no requirement for it. We, did, we didn't promise a traffic study. Uh, Dan Malloy, who was the engineer at the time, indicated that there was no requirement for a traffic study. Can I ask the commissioners, isn't it uh, automatic with 10,000 square feet? The engineer, don't you know if the traffic study is automatically paid by PennDOT, I think? Paid by PennDOT? Uh, or required then? Oh. No, there's no PennDOT requirement that requires traffic studies. It's up to the municipality, and I, and I think uh, Mr. Petroj is correct. Uh, it's not required for a building of this size. Because we are going from a semi-busy Taco Bell and no blockbuster for four years to what is a very changed scenario. And my, my last comment is, um, along Lancaster Pike, please don't forget that the comprehensive plan encourages that as a pedestrian walkway. Uh, and we want, to, you, we want to encourage people parking here to be able to freely go to the other side of the street, to the new mall there on this side of the pike, and all the way to downtown Wayne, people are walking a lot more than we think. We're accustomed to people parking diagonal on North Wayne and staying there. But if we can open our horizons a little, uh, for instance, do you plan to have parking only for Rite Aid signs? I, I don't know if we'll have a sign. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have signs, but it, it, it's private property. I mean, the idea is that it, it is for Rite Aid. We have some spaces that we're sharing with the public works facility because they, re, they really need them. Uh, and they have use of them during their business hours, and we have re, use of them during the rest of the time. But, uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to make, open a can of worms. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, we're putting the bicycle racks and things that are necessary. Somebody parks in there and runs across the street. Is somebody going to? You know, call the tow truck? I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that's uh, probably an issue that Rite Aid deals with right now, and particularly where their current location is uh, next to the movie theater. It's, it's, it's just a very difficult thing to enforce, frankly. Yeah. Uh, actually, my brother was towed from the Rite Aid lot next to the movie theater. <laughs> really? I'm surprised. More than 15 years ago. Oh, okay. Mr. Schmeller, the parking is required when the commercial development's over 50,000 square feet, not 10. 
I just checked the ordinance. It's it's the, fifty. The study. You mean? Yeah, parking study when it's over fifty thousand square feet when the building is over fifty thousand. Okay. Well, I I believe that the talk was about a traffic study, and I think if the if the if this was encouraged and I think the nod was given, where is it? We're, 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 clearly, we're clearly not nodding in favor. This has already been discussed. I think it's been pretty clear. It's not a requirement. And at this point, this plan's been in front of us several times. You know, we're not going to nod to a traffic plan at this point in time. And lastly, since, since there was encouragement of a, of a uh, pedestrian feel and an improvement of the entire block, perhaps just a small project aimed towards a future crosswalk. There's talk in the comprehensive plan of a a mid-block crosswalk. Certainly, if two or three more businesses like this open, if this one does, uh, including across Lancaster Pike, it would be wonderful for people to have that freedom. So please keep that in mind, if, the final review. Question on that. Are you talking about a crosswalk on Lancaster, across Lancaster? Yes. And that would be a PennDOT issue, I think. We yes, can't. We can't do that. No, but in, in, if there's any consideration of it, Looking ahead. Thank you. Any other public comment? Discussion with the board? No further discussion? Do I have a motion? Well, one last comment that Sue wanted to make but didn't just now. I wish the building was a little smaller. Oh, well, I mean, I've, right. Go ahead. I, I've made lots of comments. And the list of waivers largely reflect the size of the building. I'm not a fan of the size of the building. I'm not a fan of the drive through but the list of waivers really reflects that. I mean, the parking waiver, the tree waiver, if the building were smaller, um, you could put in the appropriate parking and the appropriate buffers and the appropriate trees. That's just, this is what we deal with in Wayne. We deal with parking and stormwater management. And we're about to pass a plan with a building that is significantly larger, significantly larger than the buildings that are on the property now. And look what they're asking for, waivers on parking and trees. So when the, when the stormwater management on Midland Avenue, which is a block away from this, is worse next year, we have no one to blame but ourselves if we pass this plan tonight because we're letting them build a bigger, plan, a bigger building and letting them put in not quite enough parking and they're not gonna hold the stormwater management on the property, which for a different reason, and not enough trees. There it bothers are, me. There are no stormwater inlets on this property today. The stormwater isn't going to be worse when we're done than, uh, than it is now. It's going to be a lot better than it is right now. And, you know, we, 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 we discuss these waivers ad nauseum, and in my view, there were very, very good, compelling reasons uh, for the granting of the waivers. Uh, I did a complete study of all the municipalities anywhere near here and the, and the uh, to require uh, landscape islands after every five parking spaces is, is, is unheard of anywhere in this area. I have Any a question. Oh, go right ahead. I have a question for the engineer. Uh, when you did the stormwater management for this site, did you look outside of your site itself as far as timing goes um, at any of our flood points? Um, you know, I know that we have our regulations as far as reducing, but did you look anywhere outside to see that what you're doing is actually going to improve the situation rather than just meet the code? We, we did not look outside the site. We just, we focus on the site that we're developing. But we know that when you compare the pre-development condition, which is the Taco Bell and the, and the vacant building today versus what we're proposing today, which is, or proposing on the plan, which is we do have an underground stormwater management system. In addition to that, we have an above ground rain garden, which is along Lancaster Avenue right here. So with, with the addition of the underground system and the above ground system, you know, we are improving the stormwater management for the site as compared to what's out there today. I mean, there, are, there aren't any inlets on the site right now. So it all, it all just runs out in the street and, um, so. Well, I guess, Can um, you quantify the improvement? Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Rather than just, I, I know that part of the goal typically is to delay the peak, that type of thing. But in this case, I don't know that delaying the peak is beneficial. How much are you actually reducing 
the runoff um, rates? Um, I know that I, I mean, we have our stormwater report and it, it can be quantified, but I can tell you just um, tell you tonight that when you install a rain garden on your site, uh, there's plants in that rain garden. It's about one to two feet deep. And the rain garden's designed so that the water is evaporated by those plants. So that just that alone is you're going to see some evaporation, transpiration, where the water just, is just going to basically disappear. So that alone is going to improve um, the stormwater management conditions. I guess I'm, without seeing the design itself, I'm unsure how much that's a factor, how much of your stormwater actually is going in through that system. It's in our report, and I, I'd have to, you know, we can send, send you a copy and highlight, highlight those areas, but there, there is a, a quantity of water that, that will not be at the site, you know, after you develop it as you compare it to the pre-development condition. The basic layout design is on page 18 or 19 of this. So it, it does show the basic. Yeah, if you buy the, yeah, the drawings have the, numbers I mean, we on have, it. We have drawings. You, you do have the drawings, but uh, it, do, it doesn't show the rates or the volumes. Right. I, uh, it will hey, show. Hey, Rhett, I, I, I pulled out your stormwater management report, and I guess I can give you an idea of, of the reductions. Uh, for the one-year storm, they're reducing the runoff, the runoff leaving the site by 27 percent. For the two-year storm, they're reducing it by 29 percent. For the five-year storm, 19 percent. Ten-year storm, 10 percent. Twenty-five-year storm, 4 percent. Fifty-year storm, 1 percent. And 100-year storm, uh, 1 percent, which, again, is in conformance with our ordinances. So the lower storms are significantly reduced, the higher ones slightly reduced. Thank you. And the, the key is on the lower storm events, those are the more common events. So you want to, and that's why the, the code's written that way. So you want to, you want to. Now, question, um, what is, I'm an electrical engineer, not a uh, civil, but as I understand it, when you, when you have a, um, um, a excuse me, a retention system like this, the water will come in there and then normally it will allow it to bleed off slowly into the, into the percolate, into the ground. We're not going to be allowing percolation into the ground, right? It's right. going to have to bleed off some other way. How is it going to get off? So, so normally it, it percolates into the ground, but there is a point where it will, it will stop and then it will eventually overflow into the sewer system. Right. So well, not well, all of it will go. In, in this instance, though, we're not going to be allowed to percolate into the ground under, under the so, waiver number four. So when it, so it's going to collect the water, but then where does it go the next day? Was it bleed off down, in, excuse me, into the, the sewer system? So for, the so for this system, what, what's going to happen is, um, I'd say approximately more than half of the site mm -hmm. will be draining into the above ground system, the rain garden. All right. And it's, it's the rain garden is going to fill up and fill up and fill up, you know, in those low storm events those plants and the grass and the sea mix is going to absorb it. So they're going to absorb it and it's going to, it's going to disappear through evaporation, transpiration. Eventually, during a heavier storm event, it's going to fill up and then overflow into an inlet, the top of an inlet, which will then go into the underground system. Oh, the underground system's not normally going to be in you. Well, you, our, 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 we have an underground system Right. Underneath our parking lot, right. of rows and rows and rows of pipe of detention system. Right. But so we have a detention system and we have an above ground basin. Above but my point was going to be, once you fill that detention system up with water, it's going to have to go someplace. Eventually. It's going to slowly drain out. To where? To the to the, the sewer in Lancaster. Okay. So you're going to slow. We're going to slowly release it, but we're also going to have. Uh, you're going to have this the storm. rain garden. So we have two. We have two systems. All right. How, how are we keeping the rain garden ground from becoming contaminated by the groundwater, the ground underneath that's we'll contaminated? An, we'll have an impervious membrane. It'll be a, a liner, so a plastic liner that would be specified at okay, certain To thickness. separate it. So, Any other questions or discussion? Do I have a motion to approve or reject? Uh, 
I feel that our hands are largely tied by the commissioners. And unless we really send it back to them as they occasionally send it back to us, that uh, I think we're at the point where we move on. And I, get, I think I would make a motion based on facts on the ground, so to speak, that uh, we grant final approval. But with those reservations that we didn't get to really look at the waivers as much as we have in other situations. And skipping that motion, how are you addressing the, comp the general comment number eight, where the township has requested the additional improvements further west and across the street? Uh, that they go forward? I, or? I think um, that's somewhat um, based on the circumstances. Um, I would not endorse it. I think we should not. Uh, incorporate that. I think that's uh, extreme a little. Yeah, I, I guess to uh, fine tune the motion, I would say that we grant final approval, but not including number eight. Okay. I have a motion on the floor. May I have a second? I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One, two, three. By show of hands, four. All opposed? Opposed. One opposed. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is our C1A zoning discussion. And I think I, the way I'd like to approach this tonight is I want to start with document A, which is the original document that the IC committee um, took the existing zoning and marked up. I would like to start there and go through either line by line or paragraph by paragraph and see if we have any questions. We're at a little bit of a weakness here because neither Steve nor Cheryl could make it, but just want to go through to see if there's any general questions. What I'd like to do is focus on this document and see if this document is something we'd like to send to the commissioners or not. My belief is that we send anything to the commissioners, it is going to come back and we are going to see it again. This is just more of a conceptual document at this point. It's not going to be a final document. So I think I'm 99% sure that anything we do send or reject will be back. So we don't have to you know, uh, dot every I and cross every T tonight, but we, if we have something instead we'd like to send forward, we can do that. We all know there's a second document done by the basic ad hoc committee, but I want to focus on this one first, and then we'll bring that forward. I'm sure, I'm sure um, Baron, the author, and others will bring that forward as public comment, and we'll talk about it at that point. So let's, you need a copy, Skip? Are you okay? Good. Let's start in on that document, if we could, with David and Peter's help. Ed, just to be clear, if we send this forward in whatever form to the commissioners, can we send it forward as a um, basically a preliminary amendment, a, a preliminary uh, proposal so that they know that yes. we didn't do the final? Yes. Okay. And I think we'll do it under that basis, whether we do or we don't. I think what the commissioners are looking for is if we want to do something, and I think we've done more than they were expecting, although this has taken five years or four years, whatever it's been, it's still more than they were originally expecting. Uh, but I believe we can do that with 100% certainty. So I guess I'm going to throw it to the committee as an open discussion to go right down the line to see if there's, we've all seen this. I assume we've all read it. Regina, I know you're new on this one, but you're probably as bad up to speed as we are. Maybe better being new on this one, the way this is going. Um, but let's just go through to see if what we see, both deleted and, and added, if does anyone have any major issues with any of the language that's been uh, proposed to us at this point in time. I, I, one question I have is um, just trying to get my hands around the distinction between restaurant, cafe, similar establishment. What, what's, what was the goal there? I mean, what is the distinction between, remember when we talked about bed and breakfast and, you know, meals, breakfast, yep. tea? Is this semantics here? What was the significance of cafe versus restaurant that we're trying to avoid or trying to encompass and I'm just curious if anybody has feedback on that I think it's exactly that it's it's trying to wordsmith the document to a more modern 
set of words. I don't, I don't believe there's any concrete difference between similar establishment and cafe. I think cafe is more of a, the modern term. Anybody Peter, else? we don't have a Maybe definition of a cafe versus a restaurant, do no, we? No, and, and, and without those definitions specifically in the zoning ordinance, we're now going to rely on, you know, the definition of these words as they are used normally in general usage. And really, I guess, strictly speaking, a cafe could be defined as a type of restaurant. It's really a subset of a restaurant, I would argue. Um, so adding that language to it is probably superfluous, although maybe one of the points is to try to um, focus people uh, on saying, look, we're looking, we'll allow any restaurant, but what we're really looking for is a cafe type of restaurant. Um, so by adding that language, maybe it gets people thinking, okay, this is what the township thinks really would go well there. I'm wondering if it's the number of seats. Maybe maybe that's the distinction of a cafe. I, I just that's when you talk about what struck me. That's one. Mm -hmm. The other is, do we need to specifically, when we draft new ordinances like this, specifically exclude, um, for instance, in C, um, things that are starting to pop up in the community, like those hookah bars. Um, there's I know there's one in Lower Marion and in, in Bryn Mawr. Do we do we need to specifically? exclude them in some areas? Have we provided for one in, within the township somewhere? Is there a category for those things now? What's the status of that? Well, I don't believe, I certainly haven't seen any specific exclusion of that sort of use um, in, in the zoning ordinance. Uh, and so unless there's one hidden away that's been put in there years ago that I haven't come across, I don't think there is one. You're, you're correct in stating we need to provide them somewhere in the township. Um, generally speaking, if they're not specifically provided for, um, it's then you know then you come down to an argument whether or do we provide them, and if we do, what general classification do they fall under? You know, is it if we don't specifically call out hookah bars or that sort of thing, um, you know, someone might come in and say, well, you know, that's a type of restaurant, so we're going to put them, here, you know, we'll put, well, my and that's the argument they're going to make, and then it'll be up to the township to say yes, we agree with you, or no, it's not. Actually, what it is is a tavern, and that a tavern is not allowed in the zoning district. Um, well, all right, and the reason I mention it for this particular area is that it's in such close proximity to um, uh, residences. I mean, residences along West Wayne, and then we're considering adding residential units to this zoning district. As opposed to having to provide for something like that in a strictly commercial area where residences might not be affected by the smoke, but pe where people live might be more affected, do we need to start to proactively prohibit it in some areas, recognizing that until we create an allowed uses somewhere within the township, just like we had to provide for the bed and breakfast, we've, we, we're somewhat opened up to it being established anywhere within the, dist you know, within the township. But can we, since we're working on this one, does it make sense to specifically exclude them here and, and recognize somebody well, might choose to open I mean, one up in another area? From a legal standpoint, you certainly could specifically exclude them from this particular zoning district. And I don't think it would have a, a, negative, a profound negative impact on the rest of the township. Um, so really that discussion is, is, that's a policy issue. It's not a legal discussion. Um, uh, legally, what you know, the township needs to do, and I believe we might be moving ahead with this, is the township needs to start putting together a new section in the zoning ordinance where all these various uses are defined. Um, so it's much clearer uh, in each zoning district when we say a restaurant is allowed, what is a restaurant? If a cafe is allowed, what is a cafe? What is a retail store? Uh, in most townships that we represent, in most townships that I've dealt with, um, they have that sort of def general definition of, of each type of use used out through, you know, th used throughout the zoning ordinance, and it makes it a lot simpler. Um, that being said, you are certainly not the only township not to have those sorts of definitions. Uh, circling back to the hookah bar discussion, mm -hmm. if we said or banned smoking in every establishment that serves food, you don't have to expressly ban a hookah bar unless it's a club or something and you have to bring your own bottled water or whatever. I, I mean, certainly uh, municipalities, you know, Philadelphia is one that comes to mind, has made general smoking bans. 
Um, to be honest, I don't know of any second class or first class township that has done that. And I would have to, John and I would have to look to see whether or not Radnor, especially since you're, you, know, you have a home rule charter, whether you have the power to actually create such a band. If you did, then yeah, then certainly that would be a non-zoning way to kind of affect, a, you know, you know, have a, in effect ban that that use. And since it, you're not doing it through zoning, I don't believe the um, the general rule you have to zone for every use within the township would come into play. <clears throat> okay, well, we could simply add the definition of what a cafe is, could we not? Yes, you could. Okay. I mean, not just here, but we could say this and then put that definition in the other part of the ordinance, which is what... Right, you do have a definition section that you could put a definition of a cafe in there, uh, and that would apply ordinance-wide. All right, now another, <clears throat> another question. Um, by putting this restaurant or summer establishment is now restaurant or cafe, um, what was the name of that place that was... Caddy Corner to the Italian American Club closed up. Yeah, Wayne Beef and Ale. It's about to be the Mediterranean Grill. All right, but I mean, if they decided to keep it the Wayne Beef and Ale, could they have done that? It's not just a restaurant, or it was primarily, it seemed to me, be primarily a tavern rather than a restaurant. Would that, would that have been, would that now be prohibited? Well, that, that's, that's one of the problems where if you don't define what each of these uses are, it, it gets very squishy regarding, you know, is it a tavern? Is it a restaurant? Is it a cafe? It, you know, or, or, you know, if you have, a, you know, some place that serves food but has rooms upstairs, is that a hotel? Is it a bed and breakfast? Is it a restaurant? It, it, you need the definitions. To, to separate them out. If you don't have the definitions, then you're going to have a, a fight every time over if something doesn't clearly fall into something. You know, they're going to say one thing, you're going to say another, and you know, who knows how, you know, how it's going to end up. So by, it's by defining these things that you get to it. But I couldn't tell you, you know, going back to your question, I have no idea <laughs> if it's a restaurant or not. Um, you know, it sounds to me, based on the name, I've, I've never been in it, based on the name, it sounds like if they, you know, serve food, it's a restaurant. Um, and, you know, many restaurants in Pennsylvania have liquor licenses and sell liquor. So it'd be very hard for us to say, no, it's not a restaurant. Um, okay. It's a tavern. Okay, liquor, I, liquor licenses, you have to have 28 seats and serve food. You can't just sell liquor. Right, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, um, I don't see anything in here but I, I, I skip going back to it. You know, I bet you go to any T, TGIF Fridays, um, and they have a bar. The bar's packed. They probably make more money off the bar. But if you ask someone what that is, people are going to say that's a restaurant. So that, that's what I'm saying. You know, unless we unless we create our own definitions, it, it, it's very hard to categorize these things. I also don't see anything here which permits private clubs, which of course the Italian American club is. And they have, huh? Would be permitted. It would or would not? Well, I understand it, Grandpa, but um, I understand that. Um, do we want to prohibit something like that from happening, establishing another one in the future? Do we want to prohibit churches? I mean, you cannot uh, set up a church in the new um, districts. This is what I'm saying. What was the, I mean, I thought that this thing got started. There was a condominium complex that was built that was objectionable or bigger than people thought across the street from, and there was proposed development going to happen at a, an existing property. And all of a sudden, because of that, this thing all got created. I mean, it's a, it sounds like a reactionary ordinance to some extent. And then because people have thought about it and a group of people got together and, hey, what would we like to do with this district? It seems like people tried to take a step back and be a little bit more visionary about this. This first draft of it all coming before I came on board, you know, so 
I mean, yeah, what was the point of church, no church? Uh, you know, is, just, is it just that we're trying to... It, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It might actually be helpful to still yeah. hear a little bit more background. I don't... We got one perspective here. of background last, last month, I guess is what I feel like we got was from the IC. They're not here tonight. It might actually be worthwhile to hear from a couple of people because I, I still feel like, okay, but what were they trying to accomplish here? rather than just simply be reactionary, is kind of my thought. If, if you want to do that, then I would strongly suggest we table it for another month and have the IC back here. I don't, I don't want to hear the public comment and then not have the IC here to respond to their comment, or they'll want to come back next month. So again, there is no pressure on this, although the commissioners aren't going to hear that it's taken us this long. Unfortunately, because we switched the dates, the IC couldn't be here tonight. If you want to do that, which I'm okay with, Let's have the IC here and go through from the beginning. And oh, by the way, we have the option of saying we don't think anything needs to be done right now. Well, so that's that, that's fair. But what's the harm in hearing from the? I mean, last month we you, heard from the IC and, and, we and heard, not the public. And we also heard from the public. Sure, but a, you want to hear again? A, li a little fine. bit. I, I mean, I, I just don't know. I, that's. I'm. And Andy, Andy, if, hang on one second. If you're going to talk, come up to the mic. But it's. And that, that's, and the other, I guess the other thing I would say is this. There's only five of us here tonight. Right. And how many more, uh, you know, how much time are we going to spend on this tonight and then have four more people come? I mean, I think that's part of what happened with Rite Aid tonight is that they happened to be sitting in front of three or four of us who were not 100% thrilled with the plan. The vote might have gone very differently and quickly had the rest of the commission been here tonight. I don't know. I'm thinking the same thing with this. Are we going to spend a lot of time going through this and only four, four you know, half of us basically are here and have to go through it all again next month anyway because the full commission is going to want to look at it. That's my other thought about this. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, hi, and my only thought is is that I think it's a good idea that you Andy, guys... Andy, hang on. Just identify yourself. Just for hi, I'm Andy Thanks, DeMayo. Sir. I'm 250 Conestoga Road. And we've all gone through all this, both sides, and I think it might be, not be a bad idea just for us not to say anything and have you guys just at least read it in front of us so we understand that you're at least aware of both sides of the issue, and then this way, if we have that public comment, if that has to be held off to another week, that's fine. And that way, if the implement, implementation committee wants to be present for that, but I just want to make sure you guys are aware of everything that's, that's on this, as opposed to start nitpicking one. Like we've only gone through one sentence, and here we right. are—we're already quagmired. So that might be a good idea. Thank you. But, but I, I want to agree with Sue that um, we didn't draft this. We don't know how we ended up with these drafts. There are a few people in the audience who have opinions and or information. Even if, and I ag agree with Ed, that we don't pass this in one way or the other tonight, let's hear what they have to say within reason and take it under advisement. And then if they want to come back when the IAC is here, then we'll do that. I have a question. Why do people refer to this as sides? I mean, what, is the, what are the sides? Right. No, you didn't. Somebody in the audience Well, there's mentioned. two documents. And there's clearly the IC document, and there, there's the document that I would, you know, I'll give Baron credit. A private group has sent forth as kind of a counter to that document, which makes it partially confusing. Okay, well, I, I understood it to be more of an expansion of the work, not so much a con but But actually, Skip, your suggestion for the chart is very helpful to see the distinctions between the two. So that was really a helpful suggestion. Um, but okay, so that's that's why people refer well, to it that. Does uh, what, what, everyone in the audience have that chart? Yeah, wh okay. why don't we do this then? Why don't you go ahead and take two minutes on the background, how you got involved, who you believe you represent, and give us a history of what your relationship's been with the IC committee as opposed, no, with reference to this document. That's fine. I actually may ask Kathy to give a little more that's detail fine. on that. But, but the Reader's Digest version is, okay. oh, sorry, okay. thank you, Baron sorry. Gemmer, uh, 335 South Wayne Avenue. Based upon partially the development and partially other things going on in the West Wayne area, Kathy originally went before the Board of Commissioners, if I have the timeline, 2007, late 2007, um, to, to asked to take a look at that area in relation to the comprehensive plan. 
So regardless of what the initial trigger was, the ordinance was looked at and hopefully tweaked in relation to what the comp plan said for that area, because it talked about the, the Conestoga area in terms of Wayne Business Overlay District and then Garrett Hill, Ithan, and West Wayne. So that's why it was looked at, and that's why some of the changes may, might, may not make sense in relation to what you think the trigger is, but it was looked at in that. And I think Julia did a great job last time in terms of summarizing you know, those kind of things. So long story short there, we as citizens then um, petitioned our commissioner, Tom Masterson, appeared before the Board of Commissioners, said we'd like to take a, take a look at this. We were, told, we were referred to the Implementation Committee, and a group of us worked with the Implementation, a subset of the Implementation Committee, primarily Steve um, Palantonio and Cheryl Tamola, and, and crafted um, most of what you see as, I guess, uh, A, A. And then, and then at, um, and at one, and then at some point, then they said, "Look, we feel we've done enough." And this goes on Susan's thing. They said, "We know it needs more work, but we want to hand it off to you to finish off, and then take through additional public meetings, etc." Et, et so, do you. You? The U. The U was the the group of West Wayne citizens that were working in conjunction with the the IC. So, for example, it was um, uh, Kathy Wright. Uh, uh, Caroline Hummel, um, myself, my wife, Liz Otwell, um, Stephen Falk to some extent. I'm, I hope I'm not missing any folks. But we were the ones that were part of the IC committee along with Steve and Cheryl. And then they, when they voted, they were basically handing it off to us, the group that already worked on it, to continue on some points that we'd already talked about that needed to be clarified or modified per what we had heard. They just felt they had done enough in terms of their involvement that. So it wasn't like two plans were totally separate. Their, their plan was created, and then we took that, made maybe one or two minor modifications, then added some things that we had already talked about adding, but just didn't do it when we were under their, under their um, the subcommittee. OK, this thing that says A on it, is that what the you know, IC implementation committee handed off to you? Or that this is, is this is a uh, modification of that? Th that w well, th with, the, with the exception of the square footage, which was it, in, in terms of when we were working with them, we actually presented as a, the IC group a 7,500 square feet, they, maximum for gross floor area. They changed that in the version they handed off back to us to 10,000, but everything else is what we worked on together, and then they said, you need to take this and, and add on to it. So we didn't start from different places. We started from basically theirs and added on the things that, we'd, or, that we had talked about. And obviously, we're going to talk about whether those are good or bad or indifferent, but that's, where, that's how it, it came about. So we extended that based upon what they had told us to do. They just didn't want to. So this thing we have a B on is the extended version. That, that's right. That's and the extended version of A. That's right. And we also, if you looked at the, the timeline, B actually was presented at public meetings. And that's why the highlighting's there, because right before we had, I think, at least three public meetings with the IC, and then we wanted to highlight, so at the fourth public meeting, which was done on the remainder of the group, not with the IC, they could see what the difference was between the third and the fourth public meeting in terms of what was added. And with the exception of one sentence, um, that's what Susan, I think, was bringing up last time, that um, it might be useful to actually go through A because you can see the differences, even if you want, only want to go over the non-highlighted part first when you're talking about one. But as, I think it's going to be very difficult to, keep, to, to go through a whole document, then go back and look at the subtle changes because I think you want to probably discuss the different line items um, in and of themselves. For example, like when you're going over church or restaurant, it's probably better to, to get some more background on specifically what we thought on those different things or ideas, as opposed to you guys asking questions, not getting answers to go on to the next one, and, and not coming to any resolution on any particular one in, in that. But I think that's kind of what Andy might have been alluding to. But uh, Now, I noticed when I went through this that, that if you go back to the, the, the original or, you know, the C1 ordinance, that, all, that you start out basically with this, and you're modifying this to turn it into C1. Yes, if you, look, if you look at either B or A, you should be able to tell what the original language is, because we did use markup in, in that. Right. B just, or excuse me, A just has additional markup, like the highlight, to indicate what the last version the public saw between meeting three and meeting four. Yeah. B has that, not B, A. Oh, B has, I'm sorry, thank you, thank you. B has that. No, the progression is important. Thank you. Um, just a, and a couple other brief comments. I don't, I, I, I'll ask a different question at the end. In terms of the definitions, yeah, you're right. A lot of these things don't have definitions in them. We were very reluctant 
to throw definitions in because we didn't, A, didn't want to put them in the specific section, and we were very loath to go outside of C1 and put something in a general definition because that would open up a bigger can of worms for that might affect other areas. So we were trying to be much more surgical in what we were doing, even to the extent of if we had to suffer without having a real definition in there where it would make, make sense. Um, something like the restaurant might be able to be handled by putting something in right after the you know, restaurant where or something as a, as a, a, a filtering clause or something there um, versus throwing something up in the true definition. We had that problem with, oh, I forget there was something that John Rice introduced um, that had definitions that ended up going into the overall definition section, some of which were already defined and it started overriding some of those things. And we don't, I don't think we want to get into that business if we, if we can avoid it because then you're opening up to more people than just C1 affected neighbors in that sense, so. And if I could clarify one thing that I think I gleaned last month, is that within this district that's proposed to have some changes, there are, for lack of a better word, private property owners who are residential and private property owners who have commercial businesses. And so that I think that where we're seeing some of the different perspectives are obviously the commercial property owners have one perspective don't want to see their commercial property rights restricted adversely. And private property owners who are residential owners who are probably looking to re preserve their residential value to the extent they can. And did, did anybody else kind of catch that, that that seems to be where My, some of the differences yeah. are in terms of the um, particulars of the two proposals? My, my sense of uh, the prior meeting is that mainly we heard from the commercial people and that um, they basically had concerns that their property values were going to be uh, damaged by this ordinance. I don't think we appreciably heard from any residential user. Uh, that, no, I know. think the second proposal, this B, though, is probably largely residential property owners um, versus commercial property owners. You mean that the B version is driven B by version, the residential the, owner's concerns? Right. Now, maybe Baron could answer that. Is that were largely the people who worked on the the neighborhood proposal, were they largely residential property owners? Y yes, yes, okay, they were. Okay, so we then that's, that's... Well, with the caveat, we, when we went to the Board of Commissioners meeting to get referred to you the first time, we, we were told... You had no, public no, meetings. No, well, no, but no, we were told to get the business owners involved. So we had a brief time where we did that, and then mm -hmm. things changed, and they gave us a whole different direction with the Community Development Subcommittee, and that's why we ended up here. We actually had started to meet and have expanding the group to the business owners to go over this, and then the rules changed on us again, so we just ended up here to start with, basically. Uh, oh, okay, but, but I mean, at the end of the day, that th that's probably where the differences really lie, is that we're, 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 we, as a planning commission, are going to be charged with balancing commercial and residential private property rights and balancing what's going to be best for the overall district and the township in general. Recognizing, under that scenario, not everybody's going to be completely happy, which is probably the sign of a best compromise anyway. So. Yeah, my concern is that um, it seems that the commercial uses are getting more impacted here than the residential, and it already was C1. And yeah, that's my point. Is we have to keep right. both in mind. I mean, are we trying to, we're not trying to rezone from C1 to R1 or R4 or whatever. And, you know, it, there is a a little bit of a push that is pushing it, tipping it a little bit towards the residential side in B. Okay, so then, again, without delving into the whole thing tonight, because I, I think I've gleaned that accurately, Andy? Okay, yes. So I, I would, basically, yes. So maybe it would be helpful to hear kind of the, the key points of what they're concerned about so that we can be thinking about those as we're looking through the regulation and hear the key points of what the predominantly residential property owners are concerned about so we can be key points because otherwise we're going to get hampered down in every single subsection of this ordinance when I think at the heart of it there were probably some key interests that each group has that if we understand what their interests are we can approach it from that perspective rather than trying to plow through this ordinance line by line which at the heart of it every discrepancy is is just is the distinction between their two their two concerns? 
the other thing is, as you said earlier, and Ed said earlier, there's only five of us here. A lot of the stakeholders are not here. And I, I'm still appreciating the comments we're getting tonight, but I don't, I don't think that we should exhaust the comments. I think that everybody who wants to speak can do some highlighting, and then we'll have to take this up in another meeting. If I just may say one thing, and I appreciate what you're saying, is the fact that I think you know, there's a lot of things that we are in agreement of. I don't think there's some things that, I, don't, I think a lot of it is that. I think there's only a few items that are really the sticking points, and these are the things that I think we need to hammer out. That's, so that would be helpful to hear what, and, and that's why, and we should make sure that this chart that, Peter, you put this together, or? Yeah. Um, it's just a comparison of the different proposed regulations, and it was sent to us as the Planning Commission. It's, it's basically a, a three-column thing that mentions the distinctions, and we should focus on where the differences lie. C can I make a quick comment on that? Because there are, I, I think Peter did a great job, but I have a couple of what I view as corrections to it, just so everybody's at least operating from the same. And Peter, please feel free to chime in if I'm. Um, on the, uh, the first page there toward well, the bottom. Baron, before you go there, oh, I, I want to finish on the, the philosophical oh, side and ask Andy a question, because he's probably the largest property owner in this group of properties we're looking at. When you say there are several significant differences, in your opinion, in just your opinion. I, I don't, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't think there's several. I think there's a few. A few. Yes. Those few yes. have the committees, be it the, the official IC committee or the other group that started, have the two groups worked together enough that they're ready, ready to come to us and say there are a few issues? Or is this just a function of reestablishing the committees, telling you guys to go away for another 30 days or 60 days, get in a room, see what you can work out, and then come to us as we did with Garrett Hill. And even when we did with Garrett Hill, we still had some people who were against what went forward and some that were for it. But in your opinion, is it ready to come here? Because that's part of my confusion. Is it, I'm not sure if it's just a function of saying, hey, reestablish the committee or get Steve and Cheryl to get everybody together and have, this has been years. Yes. If there's new owners, there's new residents, there's new people in the area, and just say, go away, do what you have to do, come back to us when you're ready, and then if there's still a few, we know that all the other options outside of this committee have been worked, and then we can take it from there. So I want your opinion on, and I'm going to ask Baron for the exact same opinion, is that a better way to handle that? I, I, this at that at this point in time. I mean, I think that if, if you could get Steve and Cheryl to bring us all together and narrow this down to just those boiled down points that are the ones that are the really contentious points to bring back to you, I would agree with that. I think that makes sense because I think you can get burdened with all the minutia of this of this thing, you know, cafe or restaurant or all. I mean, we can go crazy on all that. The idea, in my mind, there are points in relation to actual development that I think is what the property owners are really concerned right. about, that our rights as C1 are being taken away and want, want to preserve that. And, and I think more than anything else, those are the things that we're concerned about, curb lines and, and sidewalks. I mean, there's things that, you know, that, um, you know, we, could, we can discuss that are, that are part of what the township requires anyway. So these are the things that I think that um, are the real, there are just in my mind just a, you know, a handful of sticking points. But I'm, again, like you say, I'm, I'm only speaking for myself and but what I consider most to be true. I know Mr. Adelberger has a point with hmm. the line of, you know, residential and commercial, and that's very important to him. Um, so how all that's handled, I don't know, but I don't know if Baron feels that way or not, but that wouldn't, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know, what you think, Dom? I, I think that's I, probably I about think right. Stay close to the mic. Yeah. Okay, so, so and that's it. That, I'll take that's the left and the right. Hang on, yeah, Baron. Yeah. Hey, you want to? Yeah, give it here. Give that it here. one you can have also. That's all right. How you doing? That's Dominic Demetis, 214 North Aberdeen Avenue, uh, Wayne B. Finale. Um Going about this without taking a better look at the dual use, the dual zoning that Mr. Alberger is dealing with, I think we're approaching this with only halfway. I think if we're looking at the best interest of the entire community. We should really be looking at the dual zoning, all this at the same time. Were you active on the original committee? <laughs> uh, no, I, I didn't really get up to speed until they're ready to hand it to you. Okay, thank you. Baron? And you want to finish? Go right ahead. Yeah, well, just one more thing. I mean, the idea of this whole, and I appreciate the efforts that Kathy and Baron had done, but, but a lot had, a, lot, a couple of years had gone by before the property owners were even addressed about all this. So we weren't even sure what was going on. And there was, a, you know, 
that's, I think, was a contentious point to begin with, that, that there was a change afoot in zoning of property that these folks aren't even owners of or paying taxes <laughs> of that were going to affect changes on us, and that's when we kind of got together. And I think that, that there are points of difference, there's no doubt, and, and I think, um, you know, like you say, a true compromise, there's not everybody's going to get everything they want. But the idea is, is that um, I think it's important that the people that are actually property owners that have had families there for generations, their concerns should be given the highest priority because they're the ones that are most affected. So that's, that's all I'm going to say. Thank but you, I'm, sir. But I think that, that, that together would be a good idea. Appreciate your openness. Bear? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's a very interesting proposal. P part of what I think w is helping that we're here is the fact that we have folks that have gone through planning can understand what the implications are. If we were to do that, and I don't think that's a bad idea, implementation committee members would be, you know, Steve and Cheryl would be fine. Actually, what I would suggest is having two or three planning members on it because I think that will help give a different, give the perspective that's necessary to, to say when points are presented, oh, that's valid because that happens here or not. I think we might take longer if it's just ourselves because we, we have talked some about it. We, granted, we haven't made the great effort because we got pushed back here again. But that would be my suggestion if we did that, if we had the, uh, some facilitators from the Planning Commission. I would not, I mean, I don't want to speak for Andy and Dom, but that would, so that, so that they can look at the things we're talking about and say, yeah, that makes sense, or no, it doesn't, and things like that. So yes, if you, if you do want to make us go away for a while, give us some members, and that, that might work in a, in a good manner. It's not about making you go away. It's about trying to make it. No, I, I'm just joking. Not going on away. It. Come on. He used the term. I just wanted to throw it back. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I see missing off of this comparison chart because I think one of the big sticking points is the building size. No, it's it's on there actually. If, when you, we get to the point where I just want to make a couple corrections, I, okay. I'll bring that up. But you know, that's a perfect example to me. Yeah, I know that it's a big... your group has one number, their group has another number, and the original has a different. And the way original it has them. a different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to me, it says very clearly, we're going to have to just compromise on a number because... Well, but, but that's, uh, it just is a, I don't want to delve too much into that, but that's why all those calculations in there, because our num we tried to back up our number in the rationale why in terms of balancing things, and, and we just didn't come up with a number out of, of thin air, but that's for another discussion, certainly. Um, uh, is it okay if I talk real quick right about those? Okay. On the, uh, and again, thanks to Peter for this. Uh, it, my first quick pass at this, the, it, it, to your point, Susan, the, on the retail store, you see under uh, the very second uh, row there, current dist certain C1 district, the less than 10,000 square feet. That's the limitations in the current code. And then if you go down to the bottom of the page under gross floor area building, it's, it, it says NA, NA, and 7,500. That's actually not correct. It's NA, 10,000, 7,500. That's where the 10,000 get. And if you, everybody's not following, let me know so we can make sure we're at least in, in sync with what the differences are. Um, the next line is okay. There's no gross floor. I don't think the, there's no gross floor area for the IC and then for, oh, it says, I didn't realize it said Gamma, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to take all the credit for that. I just noticed that, um, the 5,000. The building separation, just as a point of interest, we put 20 in ours based upon the minimum R5 separation, which is a 10-foot side yard. Technically, there's going to be at least a 20, if not more, even under the other two. It's just going to fall from other regulations that's going to dictate that. So we just want to make that note. We explicitly put a minimum, even though more, more than likely it would be more than that. On the, next, on the second page, one, two, three, four down, the 15-foot planting strip along zoning lines with a budding residential district. That, sh that says N-A, N-A, and yes. That actually should be N-A, yes, and yes. We are, we're, the, the two uh, ordinances, the, uh, proposed ordinances are the same on that. Which one's that? That's the fourth one down, the 15-foot planning strip along zoning line with a budding residential district. It, it, uh, Regina, did you ask that question? Did you? Who asked that question? I did. The C-1A uh, oh, will Susan. also propose it. The, yes, that's a yes instead of an A-A in, in that middle column there. Everybody still? Keeping up? Okay, great. Um, the special parking regulations, uh, which is about midway down, um, I the, the, the proposals are the same there. There's a parenthetical including buffer planning strips, but I don't, there, there's no difference between the two in that either. So if you're, if you're just looking to see where they're different, that would be another thing. Uh, that's correct. One more thing just in terms of um, the, maxim the maximum height, the next to last line of heights and fences. 
in C, the current C1 and the IC proposed C1, it's not explicitly in there, but under the fence portion of the zoning code, it would be six feet max anyway. We had to, the reason it's four foot is because we were putting it explicitly in following, and I won't go into the details of it, but that's, it, it, it would technically be six feet. It just doesn't have to be explicitly stated in those. And then the last one, it's correct. It's N A N A N Y. But this is a good example of one of the things when the I C handed it off to us. They said you need to put this in. There was a few things that that they explicitly said. We need office. We need to define office better. We need to have the triggers in. And there was a couple things with the with the clear openings and the threshold. They they actually said these are what you need to be adding to it. So there's a reason for that difference. They hadn't gotten to it by the time they passed passed it off to us. But, Baron, can yeah. you give me fair? Do you have the map? that was in here also. I, yeah, I, I do. Can you put that on the table so they can get the camera yeah. on it? And I'm going to ask you to do for me, just so everyone understands it, including anyone watching at home, is just go through, yeah, that'd be great, is just go through the lots and tell me if they're currently being used commercial or residential. Because we, Andy. or Andy, whoever <laughs> can do it. Because we talk about residential, and I look at this map, and I only live a couple blocks away. I don't know where the residential I think I know where the commercial are, but I don't know the residential. Oh, yeah. So Andy or Baron, if you could just... You, wanna, you know, might even want to point out... Um, and actually, we'll do this when we get back out. together officially, but just while we're here, we're going to have some time tonight. Yeah, you have going to mark it, Andy, or sure. throw C's and R's? Or okay, there we go. Sorry. If you can zoom in on that the best you can, that'd be great. And why don't you start right where your point is counterclockwise, which is, I guess is either... Is that your property, the bottom right-hand corner, and go around backwards? That'd be okay, great. Okay, so... Uh, Starting here, these properties here are all commercial. Okay. Thank you. As we go across the street. Now, when I say they're commercial, they also function residentially as well, but primarily they're commercial properties. That then continues down and across here to where West Wayne Avenue intersects Conestoga Road. Right. This is then the outer. Hang on, Andy, but not come back. Come See yep. the three little lots that cut across? They're the residential, looks like the three stripes. They're the Owens Lane properties, right? And they're, they're pure residential, right? Oh, Thank I'm you. sorry. These Thank guys over here, I apologize. So those three are all residential, right? Uh, yes, they are. Okay, I apologize. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this, this, this lot here, what Baron is suggesting, is Wicklow. Wicklow, right. OK. Um, now, as we come down, this is the cemetery. Okay, but, but yeah, this, this little lot, this little thing here is a residential. This is commercial. Okay, so the front part of this is commercial for Adelberger, and then the back yeah. part is residential. And that's where this line designates. Yep. Yeah. Okay, this is the IEC, mm -hmm. and then this is the cemetery. So as these properties come down here, they're all functioning as residential properties now at this point. And then we were talking about using the trail as a cutoff. As a cutoff. So when you say those properties um, coming west on West Wayne from the IAC being used residential, most of those are multifamully, correct? Correct. I don't think there's any Absolutely. single family, but they're being used as either duplexes or triplexes. Exactly correct. Andy, how about the property directly to the east of the corner property, which is um, the health? Yeah. Come, your, come eastbound towards your place, one, one lot. Oh, this lot here? Yes. Um, you know what? That... Is that's that a pure res residential? That's residential. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. I what agree. is what is that widening of Conestoga Road just east of that? This this is the um, yeah the, the Graythorn Woods. But why is it why is that boundary line there? Is because the front part of the driveway is commercial, but the I, back I part they, is Graythorn. I think they left it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the zoning got changed. I mean, that's all residential, but the line just never got changed. This, yeah. This this was all commercial. It's, one. It's commercial. All this the way up to Conestoga, or it's residential all the way up to Conestoga there? It's, it's, it's not, it's, that's a good question. I do not know that. Okay, but it's, but it's but the, the existing the, Graythorn, the, right? The, yeah, correct. There you go. Real that's, quick, that's you can good. see here, this is, this is the, uh, the R districts here in the, diff in the different colors, so you can see that it, where it Okay, changes. so the front part of their driveway is commercial. Yeah, right is here, that commercial. is, is commercial. Weirdly, weirdly mm. commercial. And then where is the veterinary's office? Is St. Over, Hunt? Is over here. Oh, he's on that side yeah, of the trail. He's on the other side of the trail. So that would but not the driveway, be included. But, but, the, but just west of that, south of that, is, is no, right between that little axis, is that the driveway into the new little park Correct. near the trail? Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yep. 
And Vic and Dean's Pizza is out there someplace. Yes. Correct. Vic, Vic and Dean's Pizza is here. The next piece. Okay. And where, yeah. where there used to be Wayne Automotive, where is that piece of property? You know where? Wayne Automotive. Wayne Automotive. There used to be a Napa store there. Oh, 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 wow. oh holy cow! Yeah, that, that's over oh, here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, it was over here, and that's actually a uh, office building. An office building. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That that's this, a big help. This used to be all commercial. It used to be Ari's right. Johnson, and then it was you know was converted from that quarry into a residential area. And some of the properties just below Highland, across from Vic and Dean, some of those are commercial. Yeah, that is you, you've seen some of them with uh, daycare and things, right. things like that. This is also another residential here up against oh, that's true. Right. near yeah. near Adelbergers right there. Right. Good, mm -hmm. point. Good point. Yeah, it, it is a mixture. And again, going back to the and this is still up, obviously up for discussion. When we originally presented, I think it was at the second public meeting, and only were stopping at the trail, we were asked to continue down there. Obviously, we have other commercials that would be affected by. Um, uh, the St. George Hunts and, and Vic and Deans, et cetera. Okay. Since we have the two of you standing there, why, uh, why were churches taken out of C1A and C1A version B? I don't know. Yeah. If we want to get into some of those details, the, if you look at the, the, the parking requirements for churches, they are usually woefully inadequate for Sunday mornings. And the problem with this area here, if, we're, if, it's, if it's still up, is that there's really, you know, you're looking on Conestoga, there's no place for overflow parking. It's either going to go into the small neighborhoods there and just overwhelm them, like Lenore, which Kathy and Caroline live on, which is the one way, or, there, or along West Wayne, which is already parked up. Um, there's just no place for excess traffic to go. So we've talked about whether maybe allowing it by special exception, but really, it, it, besides the church that's, that's already there, which is, which is fine, the parking just becomes an issue. And we weren't looking to change the parking regulations for churches, but we know it's inadequate. So that we, didn't, we wanted to try and preserve that by not having neighborhoods and Conestoga overwhelmed with traffic. So you're prohibiting churches because of the parking issue, not because you don't want religious it, it, Yes, not because we're anti-religious. No, it's, it's, it's purely based upon the parking. But isn't church elsewhere defined in the code in terms of parking requirements? I mean. Theoretically, you could aggregate a bunch of parcels and then have a church, right? Well, but, the, but, but, but still, the, the issue still is the, the number of parking spaces required per square foot is inadequate. You, end up, you always end up with overflow. And, and in this case, there's no, really no place for the overflow to go that won't impact the neighborhood. I meant if, I meant if you bought up... And yeah. hmm? that small church, is there any parking there now? No, but you, at least there you can get a little more to Highland too. And but some of the, most of the stuff here, there's just no place. To, there's no place to go. Also, the my, church but, that's Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, no, that's, that's okay. outside of this area. Yeah. My only comment is, is if someone wanted to put another church in there and they bought the commercial wing over um, from your property, Andy. You could probably create enough parking if you bought enough ground. Well, but the point, you could always create enough parking for it. The problem but is, you, what's the required parking? And they only would have to put in the required parking. Oh. And that's oh, you're saying the code as written is defective. It's right. It's, it's woefully inadequate in terms of what the required parking spaces is per square footage. You always end up with overflows. And, sort and of like it. some of the other institutions we look at. Yeah, I'm okay. not going to comment. I'll stick to the church one on that. No, 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 like uh, Eastern. And, and, th and that's a good point because when you look at the B document, you see a lot of um, adjustments and corrections that are general issues with our zoning and subdivision. So the one thing I think we want to be careful of is we don't want the tail to wag the dog here. We got sort of caught up in this with Garrett Hill also. Be very careful that if that's what we need to do, that's a different recommendation back to the commissioners. If we need to look at zoning for churches like we've done for, for the institutionals, that's a whole different can of worms than trying to fix all the zoning issues in this one little quaint particular neighborhood, or, or we're never going to get it done. It'll, it'll exactly. Be that's why, that's what, that goes back right. to why we didn't want to change definite, put definitions right. in. We were trying to be much more surgical with, in keeping with the comp plan and, and adding the, the residential okay. and, and the checks and balances there. So if there's no objections, and I'm going to ask Steve to, and Cheryl to re-head up a committee and a group of meetings to work out the issues. And what I'll do is we'll have a meeting about the meeting to find out who was going to be involved, whether you want anybody here from the planning commission or any other volunteers. <laughs> Contact all the neighbors and move forward from there. Yeah. It sounds like. Any objections? Yeah. There's no objection. I just 
I guess do do we have the authority to do to do that? I guess do you have the authority I, to do I, that? I think we do. You're tall enough. Yeah, I think I'm tall. I think I'm old enough. I'm not tall enough. So I think I'm didn't tall enough and fat enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we have that because I think what the commissioners are looking for is our recommendation. I think we are so hung up on how to get this thing started. I think taking a giant step backwards will will be the quickest way to propel us forward. To yeah. let them in find their opinion. common ground and work out the compromises as much as you. Yeah. It and get more understanding That's from both both sides about you know more understanding about why we put certain things in more understanding about what they're concerned not that we haven't talked but that will help I would suggest that it probably be at least two or three because not every not all the planning commission would be able to come on a particular one in the different viewpoints right. I don't obviously we don't want a quorum but more than Absolutely. more than one you know sure. two to three would probably be, would be can I ask a real basic question um, if you had to pick two or three issues that are the real things that are the that are the the crux of the between us. What are they? Well, it is, is the building footprint. I mean, you know, the, the loss of, the, of square footage. I think that if you if you own a piece of property that you can put in a 10,000 square foot building or a 7,500 square foot building, logic only tells you that the property that can house a 10,000 square foot building is more valuable. So by taking that out just by dragging the carpet up underneath you, I think is 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 extreme. I think that if uh, if if the property is able to hold it within the restrictions that the township already puts in place for setbacks and things like that, then the, then the property should be able to house it. And I'm not saying that even my property could do it. I'm just saying that if it can do it, I think it should. Uh, I don't think we should give that up. Um, building heights, you know, here we are, the 35 foot height, whether that includes air conditioning or uh, peaks or how that's going to be defined so that we're not building these squatty buildings. Um, we want to make sure that we have the capability of building a proper sized building. Um, is that, on that um, when you say um, the loss of square footage, you mean the footprint of? Correct. Right. Okay, so that if you have multiple stories, you're going to have more, more square feet in the building. You're going to have more rentable square feet. I think a total, yeah, total gross floor area in that sense. So just, and again, I, I think that if you are um, just, just black and white crossing that out without having an opportunity to even propose it, I think considering that we've had it on the books for all the years that we've you know had commercial property that uh i think that's inappropriate so that's that's the real big sticking point um I, in, in my mind those are the two big issues i mean we could talk about um you know triggers as far as depending upon what you do and when you start and then once you do then you have to do all of this that's a whole nother thing that i think people are concerned about uh, as far as property owners are concerned and um, and I think Dom is right. I think we're as as community people and as people that have have grown up. I mean, I grew up next to Mr. Alberta, and um, you know we're concerned with the situation with his property and how limiting it is to him um, with the way this particular you know arbitrary line has been drawn across his property. And in some way, I know that it's it's a difficult thing. I know we've talked about it as far as you know the. the how limiting we are and what we can do in this committee, but I think it's it's appropriate that we discuss it and at least have a forum for it so that um, it's on the books so that the community is is well focused behind them because that's where we are. So I think those are the, you know, the basic items that we're, that we're concerned about. Um, just starting with the last item first, I with our committee, I would prefer to not talk, well, I definitely would prefer to not talk about the zoning line because, number one, that wasn't the charge from the Board of Commissioners. and I, we're, we're not going to get that done. I think Susan made some good comments there. I'm not saying it's not a problem. I just think we need to get this changed and then we can see what else. If we, if we bundle it here, we're never, we're never going get, to get done. Um, Andy brings up a lot of the relevant points in terms of the size, and that's why a lot of the different calculations, I mean, again, the, the numbers you see here, we didn't come out of thin air. We did a lot of work, a lot of measuring in terms of what could and couldn't be done. And a lot of what it comes down to, too, is by adding the residential, which is hopefully a plus for them, and that's what we were trying to do with the, the, the comp plan. It, but that opens up some unintended consequences that need some balances there, and that's why some of those other things are in there in terms of the size restrictions to keep the size and the scale, but based upon facts and figures, which hopefully will come out more and people understand, agree or disagree with, but at least understand where that was coming from. And the same with the triggers for like the sidewalk, because part of the comp plan is to make it pedestrian friendly. And unlike regular subdivision development, you could, you could just add residential to an existing floor, not have to go through that process, and those are the kind of things we wanted to trigger to make the pedestrian friendly. So 
I think Andy has nailed quite a number of the, the, the few differences we do have. I'm sure there's others too, but yes, I think those are pretty much the primary ones, and that's, that's where we're coming at it from. I have a brief yeah, question. Those are Barron's figures. <laughs> right. I have a brief, brief question. Actually, no, they're Matt's figures. <laughs> the uh, 7,500 square foot uh, and the 10,000 in version A, is that without regard to the size of the lot? In other words, if the lot meets 15,000 square feet, the maximum building is 10,000? Yes, it doesn't. You can have multiple buildings. It just keeps, it keeps you from, it, you can have multiple buildings. It keeps, it's attempted to keep the scale because, so you could have two 7,500 foot buildings. You could have 15,000 square foot on one lot. It's just a per building limit. That seems uh, That's inefficient. That's foot, footprint. No it's, not, no, it's gross floor area, so it would include, it's, the, it's basically the overall scale of the building. It's not just the footprint in terms of what the, what the floor takes up. I, I, we're probably getting into too much details because right. we would want to go into the numbers to talk about how this is impacted. But it well, is, it's good to understand yeah, what the difference is. It is per, it's per building, which includes all the, the, all you, the gross floor area for all floors in that building. So 15,000 square foot building would be five, maybe 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, for example. But there's no restrictions on the number of buildings. It's more the scale of the buildings. And we, the numbers you came up came from Matt and, uh, and other measurements where we looked at what the buildings are and what, the, what they would allow based upon their lot size, as, as Andy was alluding to. Okay. One last comment. The zoning boundary line that we're talking about going through Adelberger, that's nothing the committee did. That's, yeah. million, that's a million <laughs> no, we years ago. No, we can't blame for that one, I don't think. And that's no, a million that's, years ago. That's, been, so a, that's not, been around for a while. No harm was done by the activity of the committee. Yeah, it, may have even been changed. It, may, it may have been changed several times. I think uh, uh, Mr. Adelberger has referred to a change in the 70s, too. I don't know when different lines were changed, but that's been there for at least 40 Not years in that, in that sense, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any old business? A question. Do we have a, are we, uh, what are we doing formally with this? We're making a motion to table this until uh, the next meeting? Yes. Not next month, not next not, meeting. Next no, no. meeting's Tuesday. Table it. I think I'm going to go ahead, since it's my, my okay. suggestion to make the motion that I recommend to the commissioners that I speak with Steve, reconvene the committee, basically refresh where everybody is on this and have the committee come forward after they are ready and think they have gotten as much agreement or disagreement as they can before it comes back forward to the Planning Commission. So that's my recommendation. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much. Any old business? Um, yes, I don't know if you would like to do this tonight, but normally uh, at your first meeting of, of the year, um, you should reorganize. Uh, I do know that there's only five of you there, and, and this certainly, if, if, if you wish, could be put off until uh, the meeting next week if there's going to be more people at that meeting. But that's something um, normally, um, it, you know, at your first, meet, first meeting of each year, the first thing you should do is reorganize. You know, you know pick a chair, pick a vice chair. Um, and I don't know if you have any other subcommittees or anything like that, but right. organize that way. So. Just a suggestion. Um, I would understand if you want to put it off until next week, but just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I would suggest we put that off to next week. And also, why you brought that point up, we were talking beforehand. Uh, if we can check on some of the terms and make sure that some of the members who were serving some partial terms were renewed, I think there are one or two, that I, I don't know if the commissioners have done that yet. Okay. to renew them going forward? So uh, we can check. Can check. I, I'm sure Skip was not, but we can check on everyone else. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing I said. I'm sorry, <laughs> Susan. I expected that. I'm sorry? Uh, S Susan is saying... I didn't Gen hear you. S Susan is saying Jennifer has the names. So yeah. we, we, the, I will talk to the administration, Great. and we will get you that information. I just want to make sure we have that before we reorganize. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's important. I worked in one township where some guy was just... Pulled on to committee, was never yes. even nominated or appointed by anyone. So yes. it's always good to know. <clears throat> uh, any new business? Um, I actually have one comment that, uh, Mr. following up on something Mr. Schneller said about cross-block crosswalks. So, there, so Lancaster Avenue is a state road. Um, so we do we have any formal ability to request one? Because I, I'll tell you. I was at the Luella lot crossing the street to shop on the south side of Lancaster Avenue last week, and took my life into my hands crossing in front of Paramore, and thought to myself, we could really use a cross 
block crosswalk on Lancaster Avenue, like right about in front of the Wayne Hotel. Okay. Halfway I, between I South Wayne, North Wayne, right and tonight. Luella. Well, it, it, isn't there, have, isn't, the light there's a light, the light within yeah, 100, 100 you know, yards or 100 feet, actually. Well, no, I, I, I know I was You were thinking walking. about crossing there, correct? Uh, crossed. Okay. Well, um, no, no, no. I was thinking from, like how they have them down in, in Ardmore and Bryn Mawr with those lovely pedestrian things that right. flash and get the traffic to slow down so pedestrians can cross the street. But we, it has to be a request to PennDOT? Is that, yes, Kevin? Yes, it's their, it's their road, and so they, they can control it. We certainly can request it. So, and Kevin, if you wanted to add that to your list of things to look at, I actually because there's have, a great parking lot on, at Luella near Waynewood and all that, and then there's shopping on the south side of Lancaster Avenue. Um, you know, it'd be great to have a, if there's an ability to have one of those lovely crosswalks with the flashing pedestrian lights like they have down in Lower Marion. I do have some recent experience dealing with PennDOT on what they would consider a mid-block crossing on a state road and you have to meet a variety of parameters. Exactly. Um, pedestrian volume, speed limit, um, just to name a few. Um, and you basically have to provide PennDOT with that information before they'll even consider the request. Um, so it involves a little bit of a traffic study, uh, which can be done, and we can start looking into that um, and possibly look at some funding um, from the state for that, because there are programs out there um, that you can do that. Yeah, and just ec echoing what Kevin said, I mean, PennDOT would rather see pedestrians head towards signalized intersections. So because uh, I've tried to have, get these implemented in, in other municipalities and it's it's been an uphill climb because they really do not want to do it unless unless you don't have a signalized intersection within you know let's just say 500 feet or something of that nature so so they might be more more inclined to do it um, say where where Cozy's crosses or where Cozy's is across that's halfway between uh, Luella and halfway and and, and uh, Aberdeen right that's right. a long enough distance right. they would I mean, think about that. Right. Potentially, again, if the sight distance works out, and, and as Susan's indicating, they would probably require flashing signals and things of that nature. So there, there would be some uh, infrastructure would have to be installed. I was more just thinking about it helping the businesses, getting people from the parking that we have on the north side of Lancaster Avenue to the shopping that's on the south side of Lancaster Avenue. So there you go. That's it. Okay. Any other new business? Any public comment? By the way, as Jim Schneller, and I frequent the uh, West Wayne to uh, uh, Lantoga, up to the old art, uh, the art center, frequently, very frequently. So I like to comment on this issue about churches. Uh, in, in Garrett Hill, everybody thought they had a pretty valid point because of the smaller lot size. But you've got a wonderfully varied uh, commercial bunch of lots here. Uh, start up churches sometimes start small and get big sometimes they come into some good purchase money i think there's no no issue of property value here depletion you know or, or worsening of property values with the church and i'd like to argue against that also because of the plain fact that constitutionally you're running into problems especially since Kara hill already did and i stood here and could i say you know you need it at, the, at um, well, it is a crosswalk from the hotel to that sh to the to shopping up to the well. That's what deters, I think, hundreds of people a week do not cross from the hotel over towards uh, Luella Court and thence to cross Lancaster Pike and have that free shopping all on the south side. Because when you're crossing at the hotel, people take that right turn freely, very freely towards the train station. Has the township ever considered painting one or something? From from the side of the hotel, just to somehow make safe the uh, crossing of that alleyway, that small street that goes towards the train station. I, I have no idea, Jim. I don't know. And the reason I, I wanted to talk to you very briefly is the fact that there was recently an approval for a, a small shopping plaza at uh, 200 Radnor Chester Road. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, there appear to be some kind of the old PennDOT building. There appear to be some kind of wells. Do you know what they are? Is there a problem there with the groundwater? 
No, I think they're, they're, they're for stormwater management. There were some wells that were done as part of the initial uh, project. In other words, when the, when the bank was built, they put those wells in at that time uh, for, for stormwater uh, testing infiltration. And my, my comment is that I want you to take action because that project had been approved in 2005. I think if you requested the Board of Commissioners, I know it seems like it would be too late, but certainly in the future or in any way possible, it should have been resubmitted to Delaware County Planning Commission. It should have been resubmitted to you. There's been a lot of changes since 2005 and a lot of issues came up in the deliberations. I think a lot more people were attending meetings in 2005, whereas now there was a, a those people weren't around. And it was very troubling because the matter of a crosswalk and handling the school intersection wasn't handled uh, in a transparent way. And I don't think they came to a, a decent resolution about it. Now, are we talking about the uh, the old PennDOT building that they're renovating? Or are we talking no, about the, the piece of property down. just to the south of it? The entire lot by the TD. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that did just come before Yeah, it just us. came through, Jim. There is, a, there is a development that came, what, three months ago? Well, we, we saw it. Oh, originally means, saw it back in 05, and they brought it back in. Yeah, they did yeah. bring it back. Did it go to Delaware County? Mr. Schneller is asking, when, when, remember when they came back, it was part of the original plan that when they wanted to develop the second part of the lot, they had to come back to the Planning Commission. That's why we saw the plan two or three months ago for right. Turner North Radnor Chester. Right. I think Mr. Schneller is asking, was that plan submitted to Delaware County Planning Commission, and what were their comments about the plan? I, I, we I'll didn't get check. DCPC I, I, comments. Yeah, did the, did anybody? That's no. his question. No. We have to check on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, if I remember correctly, I mean, it was approved. It was an improved land development for the whole site. The only con the condition back in 2005 was that when the project was going to move forward, it had to come back in to the planning commission and commissioners for uh, for their final blessing. So I'm not sure it would have to go to Delaware County right, Planning Commission, right. but I'll check. It maybe it may have went there. I'll have to check my files. I think Great. they modified the use slightly too. I think there's more restaurant. There's more users. I think when we originally saw it, it was like a two, two user. and now there was four or five. So, um, but again, I, that's how I remember also when they finally decided who was going to go there, they were going to bring it back to show it to us again. Well, they did. They took it to the board. It got it breezed right through the board. So, if you could, if you could feasibly look into it, sure. Thank you. Anything else? Meeting adjourned. We will see you, Sue. When are we on again? Tuesday night, Tuesday night 7 o'clock. Thank you. See everybody then.